Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and this time I'm out in the daylight, yes I'm back out in the park in the daylight and um, this is a rather nice place to be by the lake I thought this is, uh, yeah, for those of you who um, you might have appreciated the audio mix in the last one but you know I've got to go back to the good visuals again because this is a nice place to be so it is as I speak the 5th of April 2022 and here I am in this um, corner of Costa Rica on uh, Lake Arenal and um, yep yeah, it's very very lovely but you know what every time I look at the news and seeing as I've been out of the UK now since oh god when was it the last day or well, last two days of July was when I left in 2021 I haven't been in the UK ever since then and you know what I find um, that whenever I look at the news um, and I find what the hell is going on over there I find it really deeply worrying I've heard right within the last couple of years the purchasing power of the pound do I blame it on that or do I blame it on um, the green agenda or do I blame it on any kind of war or whatever that um, the uh, there's been a 75% increase in the price of petrol and diesel in a very very short span of time and um, you know it doesn't mean that driving back in the UK will become more expensive I'm um, using my car at the same time hasn't it been something like a 50% hike on gas and electricity um, my neighbours who look after where I am based shall I say where I'm in the UK are sending me re me readings which I am sending off to the companies just so that they can see with their own mince pies that um, I'm not using any of this fuel and um, my god I think that by not being there <laughs> I'm saving a fortune it's a bit like that man at the moment so this is what we've got to bear in mind um, as well as that you know being out here in Costa Rica is very pleasant I say it really is you know I found a nice untouched bit or shall I say it's not really that touched there's enough sort of basic facilities what you need there's some stuff that have to do without unfortunately but I've kind of got used to that but there's so many other things that I'm actually very happy to do without it's nice to be somewhere where the population is low where there's a decent big enough expat community where I'm staying but it's not a particularly touristy place so it doesn't feel like I'm isolated from reality or cut off from um, things that I need to not be cut off from um, it's nice to be in a country where the, the whole population of the country is smaller than the population of Greater London and um, you know it's kind of not overly crowded anywhere you go and um, it's nice to be somewhere where they haven't cut all the trees down I mean although I do like the English countryside one thing that can be said about the UK um, in particular you know is that it doesn't have uh, much of its original forestry left I think it's something like about 2% of its original forestry left where Costa Rica has got um, an amazing climax rainforests that are still protected and um, you know it serves them to protect it should we say so it's a really nice place to be it feels like um, I'm beginning to feel like uh, I'm in some kind of new you know brand new chapter in my in my life altogether I know I have to go back there on the other occasion to Blyo or whatever to check in and check out that's something I will have to do on the other occasion but I'll tell you the way I feel at the moment man the way I feel at the moment apart from just having some you know it being a place to check in and check out the more I'm away from there the less I really want to spend my time there or living there shall I say I just feel very disillusioned about the idea of going back to that place and um, one of the reasons why I feel very disillusioned about going back to that place is because I keep on noticing the eco-terrorists um, who keep reinventing themselves, right, in different groups. They've been Extinction Rebellion, then they've been Insulate Britain, and now they are Just Stop Oil. And um, from what I can see, they're the same irritatingly middle-class people who, um, for some reason, seem to be... I just look at them and I think... They're part of the establishment. They've got to be. They've got to be part of some infiltrated group of people from some sort of establishment-based thing. They can't be true rebels. This cannot be grassroots, can it? The more you look at it, you know, when you think about it, what sort of idiots would try to stop you from being able to get fuel, um, to fuel your car, at a time when we're supposed to be at war, at a time when um, the economy is so damaged, so bad, that no one can get about? And all they are doing is stopping people from getting about. And they're not being arrested. You know, this is the thing that bothers me, is the fact that Justin Trudeau basically sees the bank accounts and, you know, 
persona non grata to people who got involved in protesting against his COVID and vaccine rules. But, you know, um, they seem to um, not punish the eco-terrorists um, anywhere near as much. This is the thing. They don't punish them anywhere near as much. And I just think that, well, what's going on? You know what's going on. Anyone who is disrupting, stopping traffic, stopping essential services, essential things being delivered, as things have to be delivered, as you know, right? And they're being allowed to get away with it without any problem whatsoever. I cannot help but think that the UK is finished. That's how I feel right now. And unless something really drastic happens, I think the UK is finished. And I ultimately am very pessimistic and bearish on the, the future of a country like the UK or any Western nation, the way things are looking at the moment. I think it's over. And I think that um, we, as we go into this new world, I'm not going to stick the word, the word order on it. I think the Western world is going to give way to something else, you know? And there may be multiple things that the Western world gives way to. But it's just a question of where do you reposition yourself? Because I honestly think this is what's going to happen, you know? As we go into the future, um, the smart people are going to go and leave. And they're going to find somewhere else to go to. And these places that the smart people go to are going to become part of some new emerging world that will supersede the West, right? There may be a few places out there that w which will become a kind of um, a new haven um, for people who wish to be free, but the West will not be that. The West, it seems to me, is infiltrated too much. And I'm starting to reevaluate what the word freedom actually means. Because in the so-called free West, there are so many rules, so many fucking rules. And these rules are around to do with safety a lot of the time, you know, or to do with um, nanny state related things. When I was a teenager, right, in the 80s, I could blag my way in the age of 15 or 16 into pubs if I thought, if they, you know, if I thought I could get away with it. And they sometimes they'd try to trip me up or whatever. <laughs> but I, I managed to do that quite easily. You didn't have to look like you were over the age of 25 to not, um, you know, to prove that you were 18. There wasn't that issue. And I wonder, we have to look like you're over 35 at some point in the future? Because these rules get tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, you could smoke, you know, if you wanted to. Um, then, of course, they brought in the no smoking rules. They, they brought in the, um, you know, their um, ID entry rules a lot of the time, do you know? <laughs> Parties, clubs or whatever. So then you had this sort of uh, thing where the only places that were any fun to go to party-wise were the illegal parties because everything else was becoming so overly regulated. You go to the supermarket and you're in the supermarket and when you're there, you know, you want to buy, I mean, I had this issue where I wanted to buy some alcohol. Um, I do the self-service thing. I have to get someone to come over to verify my age. But the trouble is I have to look like I'm seven years older than the alcohol buying age first before I have to show my ID. Luckily enough, I'm 50, you know, I was in my 40s as well during this time, so it's not an issue. But my God, it's such a big change that exists in the world. Again, you know, when um, we used to go to Avebury for summer solstice, once upon a time, back in the 90s, you could just turn up there, wasn't that many people there. And that's the thing, you just go up on top of Silbury Hill, you go to the pub, you go to the car park, you were left alone, there wasn't any issue. And then suddenly, well not suddenly, but it was kind of like mission creep, year in, year out. The police numbers got bigger and then you had all these um, you know, barriers put everywhere and then you had more regulation and, and as a result there was nowhere really to go, nowhere to park. It became popular, the overspill of um, Stonehenge um, came in there and all right there might be people that were thinking oh yes we managed to reclaim our pagan sites but the trouble is um, it made it so everyone wanted to go there and as a result, if everyone wanted to go there, the whole place became overly policed, overly controlled, micromanaged on every level. And I just feel that, you know, and this has been bothering for so many years, that everything is micromanaged everywhere you go. It's a fucking horrible nanny state. It becomes unlivable after a while to go into a place like that. And then there seem to be so many downtrodden, disenfranchised, and very miserable people there as well, you know, and that's another issue too. And when I have to deal with that... But then I go away and I think, my God, I actually feel a lot freer here than I did there. A lot freer here, man. You know, like, it's been decades since I felt this free in the UK, you know? And that's the, that's the difference. 
you're right, I'm in some Central American country, and that's how I feel, right? And I'm just thinking to myself that, oh, man, every time I see the news, I'm now seeing what sort of people are getting away with destroying the country by disrupting all the services in the name of saving the planet, right? We've got a bunch of people who are, I mean, they've got to be the most nihilistic people on Earth right now, have they not? It doesn't matter whether they insulate Britain in Extinction Rebellion or whether they are um, this new lot, Just Stop Oil. The fact is, we've got a bunch of eco-Armageddonists out there and I don't think um, they want to save the world after all. I mean, maybe they do want to save the world or maybe they think they do. Maybe according to their, uh, how can I say, uh, indoctrinated, brainwashing and cultish-like thing, they actually do believe that that is what they're doing which would be very misguided of them, yeah, fair enough, right? But the thing is, when I um, look at what they're doing and what their demands are, what would happen, I say, if we stopped the oil and we stopped it all now and we stopped it all tomorrow and there was no more petroleum at all? You'll have to forgive my gimbal. My gimbal's having a laugh here at the moment. Let me just, uh, let me just sort this out, one second. Um, ah, yes, I've gone straight again. That's more like it. <laughs> yes, so... If they stop the oil, as I said in a previous video, um, there was no oil anymore. There's no means of being able to produce anything. There's no means of being able to grow food because the petroleum-based fertilizer's gone. There's much, much less food. There's no lorries to move the food around. There's no airplanes and there's no ships that you can use to move food around the world. So as it would, um, you know, becoming self-sufficient in food is not something that could happen overnight. And it certainly could never happen if there was no petroleum-based fertilizer anymore. Then very suddenly, bang. Um, it's going to be the biggest genocide in history. It's going to be like, I don't know, it's going to be like a thousand Auschwitz, isn't it? Or 500 Auschwitzes all at once. And these people would be um, causing the biggest genocide, which kind of makes me think, do they hate the human race? Is that our ultimate goal? To make us extinct and give the world back to the animals? And when you see them being interviewed, all they've got is press releases that they read at the person who's interviewing them, um, platitudes and cliches and things like that they can't have normal conversations none of these people can we've got a bunch of um, indoctrinated crazy middle class people who are, I don't know, they're just utterly nihilistic and so I kind of think that this disease of the mind which seems to be happening predominantly in western countries is something that I don't want to be part of anymore man Never mind the lurgy. This is some other kind of lurgy. This is some fucking mental condition. Along with the woke thing. The whole lot of it. You know, we've been plagued by woke. We've been plagued by the lurgy. Or at least um, the idea of it being worse than it actually is. We're now being plagued by eco-terrorists right now. And at the same time, um, we're all losing our cultures. Because, um, you know, the thing is that if you, if you are in any kind of way centre or far left and you have issues with how immigration is being done. I mean, I have issues about how immigration is being done in the UK. I'll tell you what, it's a pain in the ass to bring my Filipino girlfriend to the UK without us both having to jump through so many hoops, even if it's just for a visit, even if it ain't for her to stay. But bloody hell, all she'd have to do is get in a flipping dinghy and make her way over from Calais, and she'd be given a flipping... She'd be tr she'd put, put in fucking Hilton. I mean, this is how stupid it all is. You know, that's the thing. So I'm looking at the West, I'm looking at how, how fucked up and unworkable the world is there and how it's dying, you know. This so-called part of the world that calls itself the international community that is, takes up 20% of the land masses of all of the world, right? Um, it's becoming increasingly irrelevant and moribund as we go into the future. The only downside that I can see is, right, well, the Western values as they were, as they're supposed to be, you know, as it was before, are worth fighting for. I still think that. That's the thing. The Western values, individualism, the rule of law and due process, and, you know, what do you call it, the free market. Um, well, democracy's not perfect, but, you know, freedom of speech, those, those things. Um, these things need, those ideals, which, you know, don't necessarily have to, what you call it, don't necessarily have to associate them with the West. We can, we can think of these ideas as just something that exists, a political, a socio-political economic paradigm which works, which is so far the best thing we've ever had in the world, right? Well, it doesn't seem to be there in the West anymore. It doesn't seem to have been there in the West for quite a long time. And yeah, I say that we should not conflate 
the good ideas of the West with wokeness, imperialism, eco-terrorism, or any of this stuff, right? There are certain things that are worth saving, but I think that these things are worth exporting to new emerging parts of the world. Right? That's what I think at the moment. What we are not allowed to have, because it's all been regulated out of existence by nanny statism, safetyism, political correctness, wokeness, eco-anxiety, and just about every other type of um, you know, anxiety disorder, imagined or real, that there is as we are now in the age of the disorder. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is um, what I'm thinking at the moment. And uh, I thought, what's a good name? From, what's a good name for this video? The uh, road to uh, what was it the road to hell is paved with green tiles. <laughs> I'm sure few, few people will understand that one. Yeah, but it truly, truly is. And so I'm just uh, you know thinking to myself, well, that's my only use for the UK. Pop in, do the old Amazon shop, get a few things that I need. Get out again. Try to find a way of doing stuff somewhere else and you know as i say as time goes by i think there's going to be more and more exodus and flight from the western world because the western world doesn't appreciate its best people and that's what i think um is going to happen it doesn't fucking deserve its best people so the best people can get those values can find a way of transporting those values to somewhere else in the world you know because i just hope that the idea of the west as it once was the freer and better side of it could be reborn somewhere else while the West, unfortunately, which is being lost to the wrong ones, um, dies. That's the way I see the future. So as I say, I don't want to sound pessimistic. I'm optimistic, but I'm just not optimistic about everything, that's all. Right, so, hope that was good food for thought. I don't know if you agree or not with what I'm saying there, but the way things are looking at the moment, I really don't know what to think, man. It's, it's like that. So, one shall toddle off now. See you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, do your bit to help send big tech to the land of MySpace by having a look at the show notes below and checking out our alternative platforms.